Proactor just redefined what an AI teammate actually means. It doesn't wait for commands, it thinks for you in real time. Meanwhile, Meta is throwing $100 million offers at OpenAI engineers and still getting rejected. Over in China, a live streamer's AI clone just pulled off a six-hour broadcast, sold millions worth of products, and completely crushed his own real-life numbers. And topping it off, a mysterious video model named Kangaroo just revealed itself as Minimax's Haluo 02, ranking above Google's VO3 and putting out 1,080 pixel clips that look like they belong in a movie trailer. This week, AI didn't just make progress, it took over the meeting room, the job market, the shopping cart, and now your screen. Let's get into it. So first up, Proactor. The team behind Proactor is pitching it as the world's first proactive AI agent, and they're not shy about the claim. The whole premise is that the assistant refuses to sit around waiting for prompts. It joins your Zoom or Meet call on its own, starts transcribing absolutely everything in real time, and then, here's the kicker, acts on things the moment they pop up. Somebody mumbles, we should turn that into a JIRA ticket. And before they finish the sentence, Proactor has already created the card, assigned it, and dropped a summary in chat. It's doing this because it doesn't rely on short-term memory like the old-school note-takers we've all tried. Their architecture pushes what they call global context perception. That means it remembers what was decided last month, who promised what, which action items were actually finished, and even the reasoning that led to a choice. If you reference the migration plan from last quarter, Proactor instantly surfaces the document, reminds the team that two follow-ups are still open, and nudges the relevant people without anyone requesting it. Under the hood, they highlight three pillars, context-aware processing, so it always knows historical background, a memory stack that spans multiple sessions, and real-time action. You see it during a developer stand-up, Proactor labels every speaker, inserts timestamps, and as soon as the back-end engineer mentions we need another load test, a separate channel lights up with a test plan template already half-filled. The vibe is less Siri for meetings and more second brain that behaves like a teammate. They keep hammering the point that proactivity saves you from the graveyard of forgotten AI summaries. Instead of a wall of text hitting your inbox after the call, you get continuous nudges and bite-sized insights while the meeting is still live, so tasks aren't lost to memory drift. And yeah, you can still chat with it offline. It stores all that cross-meeting context in a searchable knowledge base, so weeks later you can ask, did we ever pick a vendor for the new C and get the answer with the original justification attached? The marketing around this is clearly leaning on fear of missing out. Their landing page practically shouts, join the waitlist now, promising that it will lead every conversation, not follow. They even toss in quickfire examples, sales reps getting real-time cue cards with personalized questions, recruiters seeing auto-generated comparisons between a candidate's responses and the job requirements, journalists fact-checking on the fly, and students in lectures gaining instant resource links while the professor is mid-sentence. They dress it up as the number one proactive AI teammate and insist it'll shave off post-meeting busy work by dropping fully formatted follow-up emails into your drafts folder the second you hang up. Whether the real product always lives up to that hype is something we'll have to test, but the ambition is unmistakable. Now, off that buzz, let's hit the corporate drama. OpenAI's Sam Altman confirmed what had already been floating around his rumor. Meta, under Mark Zuckerberg, has been blisting OpenAI engineers with nine-figure offers. Yeah, nine figures. We're talking signing packages north of $100 million. Altman said it on a podcast chat with his brother Jack, and he sounded equal parts amused and proud because, according to him, none of OpenAI's top talent has jumped ship yet. Meta's fishing for people to staff its brand new super intelligence team led by former Scale AI Chief Executive Officer Alexander Wang. Remember, Scale AI got scooped up by Meta for roughly $14.3 billion, so Zuckerberg clearly isn't shy about spending. Yet despite the $100 million carrots, Altman claims OpenAI employees believe the mission, and probably the equity upside, looks brighter where they are. He even hinted that Meta's focus on raw compensation instead of a shared artificial general intelligence vision might undercut culture in the long run. 
All right, now, since AI voiceovers keep coming up in the comments, here's something you'll want to check out. It's called Podcastle, and they're sponsoring today's video. High quality AI voices are hard to come by, but Podcastle makes it surprisingly easy. With a library of over a thousand lifelike voice options, you get everything from intense narrators and hype-driven motivators to anime-style characters and smooth, relaxed storytellers. Voice switching is instant, and the realism is seriously next level. The best part is that it costs about four times less than most tools offering similar voice quality. On top of that, you can clone your own voice and use it seamlessly across podcasts, videos, audiobooks, or any other project you're working on. Plus, if you're building tools or workflows, they've got a brand new Async API that lets you plug their voice tech directly into your own platform. So yeah, huge voice library, instant switching, budget-friendly, and super flexible. You can try it out right now at podcastle.ai slash tools slash AI voices. The link's also in the description. All right, back to OpenAI and meta drama. The headhunting hasn't been subtle. Reports say Meta aimed at lead researcher Noam Brown and Google Brain veteran Kore Kavukulu, plus others, but they all turned the offers down. Meanwhile, the talent merry-go-round in AI is spinning all over. Anthropic already lured OpenAI co-founder John Schulman. DeepMind folks keep scattering, and each lab talks up their path to safe superintelligence to convince engineers they're on the right team. The takeaway is that the gold rush vibe in AI recruiting just escalated yet again. When a signing bonus alone hits $100 million, you know the company's betting its future on winning these people. All right, let's pivot from Silicon Valley paychecks to the streets, or rather the screens, of China's live commerce megaverse, because what Baidu pulled off last weekend is jaw-dropping, Luo Yanghao, one of China's celebrity streamers, hosted a six-hour sales marathon pushing 133 different products, from premium baiju to everyday gadgets, and clocked over 13 million live viewers. But Luo himself was off somewhere else sipping tea. The entire show was run by an AI-generated digital twin, built with Baidu's Ernie Stack. The avatar copied his voice inflections, trademark jokes, subtle facial tics, even the habit of tapping the table while making a point. He and an equally synthetic co-host volleyed banter back and forth, responded to chat, and kept the flow going for six hours straight without a single flub, dry throat, or lighting complaint. In that window, they racked up more than 55 million yuan in sales, around 7.5 million United States dollars beating Luo's own real self-performance from a month earlier in just 26 minutes. Baidu says this isn't a cute one-off. Over 100,000 digital humans are already on the air across the country, slicing broadcasting costs by more than 80% and bumping average transaction volume up 62% for the e-commerce shops that use them. Because an avatar never sleeps, a store can run a 24-hour carousel with perfect brand consistency, swapping outfits or accents on demand. Analysts note that the Chinese live commerce market exploded from $61 billion in 2019 to roughly $695 billion in 2023, and AI is poised to push the curve even steeper. Baidu's own UCN platform claims a 200% jump in gross merchandise value last year with digital human streams growing 11-fold. Luo actually went on Weibo afterward, admitting the avatar's sales power shocked him. He joked that he felt dizzy watching a robot replicate his style so well, though he might also be eyeing royalty checks. There is still that trust gap. Many shoppers say they buy because they connect to the human host's authenticity, but the quality of these avatars is getting so good, you need frame-by-frame -frame scrutiny to spot the occasional giveaway, like the scripted beer sip with zero throat movement. Give it another upgrade cycle, and that quirk will vanish. Once consumers accept that a digital host can be endorsed by the real person and still deliver value, the economics are hard to resist. Brands reduce payroll, never worry about sick days, and can script compliance-perfect messaging in real time. Finally, let's jump to the fresh model flexing on the video generation charts. Minimax's Hiluo 02. If you follow the artificial analysis video arena leaderboard, you probably noticed a mysterious model called Kangaroo rocketing up the ELO scores. 
Turns out that was Hiluo02 under a code name. As of this week, it sits in second place worldwide with an ELO north of 1,300, sandwiched between ByteDance's Seadance 1.0 at the top and Google's VO3 just behind. The standout spec is native 1080 pixel output, which few open commercial models hit cleanly right now. Clip duration lands in the 6 to 10 second zone, perfect for social teasers, cinematic transitions, or quick establishing shots in a longer edit. The motion is unusually stable. Pans, dolly moves, even acrobatic physics are handled without that jittery puppet feel older diffusion models sometimes produce. Minimax builds this on a diffusion-based transformer backbone, reminiscent of DIT, but tweaked for filmic bursts. They support text-to-video, image-to-video, and a subject reference mode labeled S2V, where you feed a photo of an object or character and then direct the camera around it. Inside interfaces like focal or video tube, you can type something as casual as a dragon flying past a misty mountain, camera tracking below, and Howlud 02 usually nails the shot in one go. No prompt engineering jungle required. On the workflow side, they offer director presets. You can say pan right, tilt down, or push in pedestal up, and the model obeys with respectable spatial continuity between frames. Now, when scenes get very complex, lava, rivers, thunderstorms, flocks of birds, textures may warp or backgrounds ripple, though the motion stays coherent. Still, for short, punchy footage, the quality to cost ratio is apparently record breaking, according to Minimax, and early users on App Store and Google Play are leaving sky high ratings, averaging around 4.8 to 4.9 stars. Focal Zone blog calls it the model you choose when you need momentum. Scenes that move feel alive. Minimax isn't a household name yet outside Asia, but it's a Shanghai startup founded in 2021 by X Sense Time folks, backed by both Alibaba and Tencent. They've rolled out an entire Heiluo suite, earlier video 01 versions, plus speech and multimodal large language model branches, and they've been releasing upgrades in daily bursts all week under the hashtag Minimax Week. The 02 release specifically touts best-in-class instruction following and native 1080 pixel output, which places it ahead of Google's VO3 in both resolution and cost efficiency. Long-form generation, of course, is the next arms race. ByteDance's C-Dance still leads the board, but Heluo's jump shows how quickly that position can shift. All right, now be honest. Would you trust an AI clone to sell products better than a real person, or is that where we finally cross the line? Drop your take in the comments, hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.